You know, I... Uh... <laughs> and and we, we don't know that. You know, one of the things that uh, people, uh, you know, don't think of or understand is that in dire circumstances, almost anything goes. And so you have to have a a multitude of different things that you can lean on to survive. And uh, I, I think that including the whole group is where we're at. But I don't know how this whole thing's going to play out. You know, you were talking about NORTHCOM and, and foreign mercenaries and troops that are going to be available in America. But I'm just wondering, let's take Mexico as an example. They have 100,000 people in the military and a country of 100 million people of which 30 million of them alone are in Mexico City. Uh, if they send 50,000 troops to the United States, uh, I can I can rest you assured that the government in in, uh, in Mexico is going to be in deep trouble because there's a lot of dissension in all countries, not only Mexico. And so I think every country that wants to uh, uh, send troops to America. Uh, tr- takes tremendous risk because they're risking the fact that they can have a revolution in their own country. You know, I'm re- and, and folks, you think I'm kidding here about in- internment camps. Uh, my producer just pulled up a DenverPost.com article. This is a Denver Post in Denver. Uh, Colorado internment camps may be restored. Well, they're not maybe. They're restoring them right now. Uh, the Park Service is expected to hear comments about the Heart Mountain internment camp in Cody, Wyoming. Now, uh, the director of the National Park Service said a, service, a series of public hearings to be held in Denver, Glendale, Arizona, Salt Lake City, Seattle, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and Sacramento will allow public input and give service officials the opportunity to answer questions about the criteria to guide the multi-million dollar program. Now, folks... A lot of these camps is where they interned the Japanese after Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed an executive order uh, to uh, quote here out of the paper. Uh, on December 7th, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, and a little over two months later, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed an executive order empowering the Army to remove certain people from excluded areas. Well, we don't have, we're not at war with Japan here. They're fixing up these internment camps, existing ones. The military bases that have been shut down are being reopened, okay? we got the National Guard out there now recruiting for internment specialists. They are getting ready. Now, I, I want to read you something that, uh, and this is in response to the Chuck Baldwin article that I just read a little bit out of. And this was a response guy says, when I left the Army in 1992, I never thought in my lifetime that there would come such a day when I'd be called upon to defend my actual home against a hostile government invader. But since this deed has been thrust upon me, I guess I'll have no choice but to prepare for war. I sit in relative com- uh, comfort of my home and try to make sense of it all, but none can be found. I ask, why? Why should citizens be forced to choose between the options being presented? Will some family members betray me for a lesser sentence? Will my neighbors point in my direction? Or will families and neighbors join together to fight and survive? I don't see a political remedy to the issues we face, for it is they who are armed to the teeth and will bear arms against the citizens in the future. I fear we will be outnumbered, outtrained, outgunned, and outorganized at first. They will attempt to eradicate all those who oppose their one world order, and many will accept their satanic orders with glee. If this roundup begins before the states can offer protection from the United States forces, I just hope that some will be prepared for tyranny that lies just on the horizon, waiting to pounce on the unsuspecting masses. I will continue to press my state legislators to withdraw their consent and obedience to the ungodly forces of the United States. May God look upon us favorably and grant us the strength to endure to the end. This is what I'm starting to get back here from these articles of being. 
and and Chuck Baldwin, my God, this guy's is about as radical as as a marshmallow. But he sees what's going on. He is talking to military. He's talking to police. He is talking to people, and they're saying, and they're saying they're getting ready for what? I don't know. But here's the position I'm in. I'm damned if I do, and I'm damned if I don't. I mean, we can sit here and prattle on about, you know, I, I got a story here, guys, uh, out of Florida. They got people that have horses down there. People are now butchering them because they don't have any money and they don't have any food. They're, they're literally snatching horses out of people's corrals and, and their pet horses, and they're slaughtering them for the meat. You've been to Florida lately? You've seen the economic chaos down there? I mean, Bob, my God. Uh, let's go to the phones here. These people have been holding Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. I have something to say here. Please. One of the things, uh, they're starting to recruit uh, for these uh, uh, internment positions. Uh, if you'll notice, the training is a six-month training period. And uh, that tells me that they're not thinking of major problems in the next three months. It would have to be, say, six months from September the 1st, which would be in February or later. And they would have to establish some sort of a base force to to tend to all of these uh, internment prisons. And so I think what they're looking forward to here, again, I think we're going to see a dry run here this fall. And then down the line, a year or two or two and a half later, the currency is going to collapse. It's going to be default. Uh, there'll be another epidemic. Only this time, they'll probably try to kill most of the people in the country. And then you will see the occurrence of the Northcom moving into action and bringing in foreign troops and, 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 and mercenaries. And uh, that's when I think it's going to happen. Well, and, and I have posed this question to people before. All Bubba says... Oh, that's never going to happen here in America. If you don't love it, why don't you leave it? We have been demonstrating, Bob Chapman, to the to the rest of the world that we can get these nation-building forces together, the coalitions, and we do it gangland-style attack. We bring in many countries to go against a country that we don't like. Let me ask the question here. What did Saddam Hussein in Iraq do to the rest of the world that absolutely begged that his country be destroyed, he be killed, put on trial, and then killed. Uh, his two sons be killed uh, to kill 1.3 million Iraqis, to displace millions of their, their citizens. What did Iraq do to the United States or do to England or do to France, any of these coalition forces? And people are so stupid that they think that those same forces, the Blackwaters, the Mercs out there, will not be used inside this own country. Why? Somebody please explain to me what protection, what umbrella of protection we have in this country against tyrants and the global orderist. Please tell me. We're the jewel. We're the thing that has to be smashed. Because we don't want other people operating like us. We don't want people free. We don't want them to have liberty, we don't have the. We don't have the. If you want to contract with somebody, fine, you can contract with them. If you don't, you don't have to. You want to be left alone. You want to live your life in full measure. Enjoy your children and your grandchildren. You, you want to earn what you earn. You want to keep. You want to live your life. But these people are not going to let you, and they're willing to. Do, they're doing it right now. They're destroying this country, the very economic fabric of this country. They are laying it waste. And people are too stupid to see what is the inevitability of this. Do you think people are going to go quietly into the night and go, okay, I guess I'll stand out in the street corner and sell apples or pencils. Maybe I'll get a government stipend here and there. Your government is bankrupt. Do you get it? Do you understand? Uh, I don't even see the point of doing this shit anymore. My apologies to the affiliates. Any complaints uh, from the FCC, just turn them over to me. I was a little too heated. Uh, I used to do my standard capital S with a hit. But I am angry. I am beyond angry. And if the FCC wants to make a big deal out of this, why don't you ask them 
why we have a controlled media in this country, why they don't allow people to put up low-power FMs without harassment. We've got to get the government pre-digested pablum from the mainstream media. Uh, we've got an uphill battle. My apologies uh, if there were any children listening. This is what an adult shouldn't do on the air. Rick in Ohio. Hello, Rick. Hey, 